Um, probably handy, I have it here. So this is sort of how um, you're greeted. The first stage that I sort of skipped here is I've um, registered a local user, um, which I'm going to log in as. And when you register that first initial sort of bootstrap local user, you get a, um, you have to add a second factor. Here I'm using uh, Google Authenticator um, to provide a short lived token, which I'm just waiting for it to refresh. Uh, and now I am. So this is sort of the teleport unified access plane, but you know, there's currently nothing here. I uh, you have one cluster. Um, I don't have any servers. I don't have any applications. You know, it's a lonely world. It's just myself. So we're going to start first by just um, adding a server. And this is sort of a new addition to Teleport Cloud to make this sort of onboarding experience much smoother. Um, but we provide a very easy bash script um, to install uh, a new server. And so I have a Ubuntu instance here, which I'm just going to run it. This is just going to run in the background. It sort of auto detects all the distros. You know, most major distros work, um, and you can see it's already installed. It should have registered, and here we are. So we've connected our first instance into Teleport Cloud. Um, so this makes it very quickly to get up and running. I'm going to log in as um, this root user. And so we've gone from, this is my local environment where I've SSH into this machine to I'm now accessing it with the Teleport UI. And so I can do things like HTOP. You can see I'm, I'm almost running out of memory. Um, let me exit. I can just do, um, you know, echo. Hello, Cloud. And so one of the reasons why I'm just sort of running through a few examples there is all of this activity that's happening here is also um, recorded and captured in Teleport itself for people who sort of use Teleport. So if I come to the audit log, um, you can see I've logged in and I you know, started a session. All of this information, uh, JSON structured logs that you can send to a SIEM solution. We currently don't have a native SIEM solution for Teleport Cloud, but we would love to get early feedback from customers if there's a current stack that customers would like, and we can pipe all these events into a, sort of a partner or third party. So, you know, this provides a lot more detail than you'd get with, let's say, OpenSSH, um, but it's still sort of hard to figure out what's happening. And so we have this feature, um, which is our session player. And um, you can think of this as sort of a, this is a full like TTY output. Um, and, you know, you can even like copy and paste and sort of like interact with this to figure out what happened during that session. And so there was Hello Cloud. Um, so there I have added uh, an application. So we future session recordings. The last step for the setup is I'm just going to, you know, Invite a user. Um, so I'm going to invite Mark. You know, you can help me out. Um, so you can invite users with our local user system. Um, if I send this to Mark, if I show open this incognito, um, you will see that Mark would go through a process that would be very similar to myself, that he would have to register, pick a password, and pick a second factor. But this is also not sustain like a very scalable way to add. Um, users into Teleport. And so in my next cluster, I'm going to go through um, a sort of, this is sort of one I set up earlier. So just before I go into the other cluster, I'm going to talk through what we just did. So, you know, we added um, a new cloud server, you know, I, as I like to say, using ClickOps. But we do have um, like our manual install instructions for adding servers. Um, which is a similar addition. So this actually, um, this is probably a good segue. I can go through here. So I'm going to um, go on my local terminal, uh, log in again. And um, the CLI also requires a second factor. And 
It's thinking. Okay, so now I'm logged into the same cluster, Asteroid Moon, I'm logged in as admin. And this is another new addition that we added in Teleport 5. So tcuddle is our admin tool and it lets you um, perform a range of actions that you may not get in the UI. So um, we have a, a very vast output of help commands, but uh, let's say if I do, actually I'll just make this a little bigger for everybody. Um, tcuddle tokens at, um, can add like a Kubernetes token. And so you can do a lot of administrative things just using the command line. And then you'll, you can also edit some of our resources. I'll sort of go into that a bit later. And we also have the Terraform plugin. So you can like, you know, very quickly go from a POC from using our wizard to our manual install instructions to fully scripting to make it sort of scalable. Um, I showed a session that started and we feed the audit events and session playback. And um, I invited Mark as an extra user, but we're going to go a little bit more deeper into RBAC in my one I made earlier. So let me uh, close the moon uh, and then we go to Ashwood Sun. So this server, you can see first the landing page is different. Um, we're having everyone going to go through um, GitHub as an SSO provider. GitHub is actually one of the SSO providers we also provide in our um, open source community edition for uh, SAML and OIDC providers such as like Active Directory. Um, we are, they are supported in Teleport Cloud, but that's also in our sort of on-prem enterprise edition. So I'm gonna log in now. And because I was already authenticated with GitHub, I didn't have to do anything else. I'm now logged into Teleport. And so, you know, this is sort of a pre-populated um, Teleport cluster. And you can see here, I have a range of um, servers already added. And one thing you can see, it, these are all EC2 hosts. This is a, a Google Cloud Compute host. Um, you can add any sort of cloud provider or like on-premise host to Teleport Cloud. And um, I've used these labels, which you can set uh, manually, but we also have dynamic labels, which can pull in other metadata. So you can put in, let's say, uh, tags that you're also using for AWS EC2 instances. Um, and here you can also see that this server has um, eVPF enhanced session recording. And I'm going to log into this one to just show another um, advanced feature of Teleport. And so uh, get my eVPF example. And so this is very, I don't mean to present it here. So you can see here that I have. Um, a string that I'm echoing that's like base64 encoded and then it gets executed. And so um, I run this, you can see there's sort of some output, but this kind of to some degree shows us the limit of the standard TTY session recording output. But because this host has our um, eBPF session recording, uh, the audit log is much more detailed. And so when you come in here that you see um, we have a session network connection. We can see which session commands are run. And so you can see that through that one command that I ran, I curl, I made a curl connection to this IP address. Um, and so this can be very helpful if you have a very sensitive host um, that you want to capture possibly like a employee exfiltration or some other suspicious sort of activity happening on those hosts. Um, so uh, next up in my sort of pre-going cluster, you can see I have a, another server up here in our cluster switcher. And so this AWS one was actually um, a cluster that I used for a, another demo, uh, demo for my last webinar. And this is using our trusted cluster feature. And so this lets you connect multiple teleport clusters and share trust. This can be within your own environments or if you're a MSP and you um, support other people's clusters, you can connect them and you can also sort of limit access. And so if I come back to Asteroid Sun, you can see this cloud instance is the root and then I have one leaf, but you could have like many hundreds of leaf other clusters. So you can really easily use Teleport Cloud as a central place to manage all of your already existing Teleport clusters. Um, next up, I have 
um, application access. Um, application access was designed to, you know, as I said earlier, secure internal applications and, you know, developer tools. I'm going to log into um, my last cluster. If you're more interested, I'd recommend checking my last webinar. Um, I did a really good deep dive. But here you can see we have these cards that you can log in. Um, you know, I'm logging into Grafana. It's sort of booting up. And this is sort of an example of, of a developer tool that provides secure access. And you can only access it using um, Teleport Cloud. Hey Ben, is that, is that was it firing up? Um, just want to just remind everyone to uh, use the Q and A feature. Got a couple of questions coming in, but we will take those at the end. Um, again, just more the a little advertorial here of please ask, put questions in the Q and A button. Back to you, Ben. Thanks, Mark. It's a good. Um, and then here's another example of like an internal application. Um, you know, this is because of a small implementation detail, but for people who are interested, you can see. Um, Asteroid Sun is the name I picked for my cluster, but each application that you add also has its own subdomain. And so uh, this makes it very quick and easy to just use you know, standard URLs to access these applications. And so if I was to access uh, this in an incognito window, it would prompt me to like re-authenticate into this cluster and then it'll like redirect me to that application um, as it's booting up. And so yeah, you can see here. Oh, here we are. And so if I, I'm I'm not logged in in GitHub on my um, incognito window, but that would sort of take me to this application. And you can see we've used JWT web tokens to you know log in as um, myself into this application. So then you could even extend your application to take use of teleport roles. So it's probably a good time to dive into roles. Um, you know, I have a a range of other users here. But teleport roles also combine very well with our labeling system that I showed earlier. And so, um, you know, you can create many teleport roles and you can sort of limit access based upon um, role definitions. And so you can uh, label Kubernetes clusters, application nodes. Um, and this can be very helpful if you want to, you know, just provide access to, for, you know, engineering to only staging, but you want your DevOps team to access all infrastructure, um, you can use our, our role-based access control. Another feature you can, you know, you can limit is sort of what sections get shown up. So you can have a role of like an auditor that doesn't have access to the session recordings or the events or the user list. Um, you know, there's a lot to sort of unpack here. And if your team is sort of running into any sort of problems, we can be more than happy to sort of help sort of create custom roles to sort of solve the problems that you're running into. And, you know, this is kind of the auth connectors that I showed earlier, it's sort of GitHub and, you know, you can add basically any um, SSO provider that you have uh, either has a OIDC or a SAML connector. Um, so next up, diving away from the UI, um, I'm going to Log, TSH log out because I was logged out into um, my moon cluster and I'm going to re log in to um, the cluster that I currently have my sort of asteroid sun. So, this, as we saw quickly there, the CLI re authenticated, um, it has logged me back in. And um, if I do TSHLS, you can see, um, you know, the similar experience. So often, you know, we have many engineers who just use the CLI experience for all of their day-to-day -day, um, work. And so you can do TSH, SSH, um, EC2 user, and just pick the host name. So you don't have to worry about like IP addresses, um, echo TSH example. Um, and then this, you know, CLI experience is also sort of monitored and audited um, in Teleport as well. But I came here to show off our new um, multiple Kubernetes clusters and some other examples. So Teleport 5 lets you add multiple Kubernetes clusters um, to one Teleport instance. Um, and so here I have a DigitalOcean and two um, Google GKE clusters. I'm going to um, log in. 
to my cloud demo. And then um, the experience for anyone who's using Kubernetes is just the same. So um, you just use kubectl. And so, um, so I can do uh, kubectl get pods. For the first, this, this is a bit of a quirk. The first couple of times you make it, it caches all your credentials. And um, you can see I'm running this one um, shell example here. I come in here, I'm gonna exec into this pod. And so this is sort of, you know, I'm gone from like SSHing into servers into like keep uh, execing. So let's see what's running here. Let's see, I also have a pod, it's like running Nginx. Um, and so I can exit here. And then if we come back into, uh, oh, let's exit this. Um, back to my cluster activity. You can see all of the Kubernetes requests and all these other sessions that I, I did in the terminals have been um, recorded and captured. Um, 